again, welcome to another meal prep. It's been a while. I didn't meal prep anything, so I didn't film it because I didn't do it. <laughs> you know, I took that break for what, a month or so? And so since we're starting back low carb, because of David, his A1C, mine too, but his is the one that, you know, put my rear in gear, we decided to go low carb because that has proven with me to lower my A1C and it is approved by my endocrinologist. So I'm like, well, if it worked for me, surely it'll work for him. So that's what we're doing. And I asked, did anybody want to see meal prep or anything? And I had a number of you that did. So I figured if I'm going to do it, which I'm to, to stay on track, I have to meal prep. I just have to, That that's who I am. So I figured if I'm going to meal prep, I might as well throw my phone in front of it and video it. So what we made today was something I made when I was on low carb last time, sausage and egg casserole. Now it is, um, the carbs will be on the screen. I can't remember right off. It's very rich and very um, satisfying. It is a very satisfying breakfast. Then for lunch is a new recipe I tried out of one of the keto cookbooks that I got at the library. It just says, no, I found this one online. When I put the recipe on my website, it will have where I got it from. I think it's peace, love, and low carb, something like that. Sesame chicken egg roll in a bowl with keto yum-yum sauce. And I've already tasted it, and whew, it's good. Can't wait to dive into it. Then for dessert or snack or whatever, this was out of a keto cookbook that I got at the library. And you know, I'm not doing keto, which I don't have a problem with anybody that is. I'm just not the one that strict with it. But we know, and we say it every time, <laughs> that if it's keto, it's automatically low carb. So you can be safe if you're eating low carb, that if you find a keto recipe, you are safely eating low carb. So this is for a low carb chocolate chip cookie dough. It's just, it's a cookie. A, a German chocolate, I should say. German chocolate. Oh my word. <laughs> it is so good. I've already tried it. Now, you will see in the video, I had to change it a little bit because as written, it didn't work. So I had to keep up in the almond flour. But the thing is, I got more cookies than the recipe stated and it's fewer carbs than the recipe stated so i feel good about that that is what we're having this week and so i guess we'll just turn around and get started to start our sausage and egg casserole we want to brown one pound of breakfast casserole now if you heat your pan first and then put your oil in there it will not stick so brown it completely done. Then once done, transfer it to a paper towel lined bowl to drain off as much grease as possible. I've already beaten six eggs and added salt. Now here's some pepper, but the footage was completely blurry. I don't know what had happened. Now we're going to add a cup of half and half. It's just regular half and half. I guess you could use fat free if you wanted to. I don't even know um, if you used almond milk or anything, but blend it up really well with your whisk. Then to make the casserole, spray an 8 by 8 baking dish. Put just a little bit of the egg mixture on the bottom. That's just to keep the, give the sausage something to sit on. And then we want to add all the sausage. And you'll see here how much fat came off into that paper towel. There's enough in the casserole. We don't need that too. <laughs> <laughs> then we want to top it with two cups of shredded sharp cheese, and you can use whatever kind of cheese you want, I imagine. So spread that around, and then we're going to top it with the rest of the egg mixture. Then just take your whisk and press everything down into the eggs really well, and this is going to bake at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. I baked mine for 35 minutes, and we're going to cut it into six 
as even as possible <laughs> servants. I'm never too good at that part. Now, I just want you to see there's a little bit, if you can tell, a little bit of the white is loose, but when you reheat it, it will finish cooking. You don't have to worry about that. So just divide it out into six servings. Now we're going to make our sesame chicken egg roll in a bowl. And what I have in this pan, I heated my pan. I have a tablespoon and a half of sesame oil, toasted sesame oil. Then I'm going to add two teaspoons of minced garlic, which would be like two cloves. Then I had five green onions that I chopped and I separated the white part from the green part. Add that to the pan. Now I want to show you how to save your green onions. Wrap them in a paper towel and then wrap that in tin foil. And I promise you they will last for weeks on end and be just as fresh as when you put them in there. Now. You're going to notice that I was so busy teaching you my little trick on how to save green onions, I almost forgot to add the red onions. So we want about, oh, half of a small one, I guess, or to taste, whatever you like. Now we're just going to cook this together until the green onions become translucent. Next, we're going to add a roughly three quarters pound of small diced chicken bite size season it with your house seasoning or your salt and pepper and then add a teaspoon of ground ginger and we're going to cook this until the chicken is completely done now that the chicken is done we want to add one bag it's a 12 ounce bag of broccoli slaw and it's washed and ready to use add the whole thing and then we're going to add some unseasoned rice vinegar one tablespoon of that and then regular old soy sauce an eighth of a cup of that and you want to cook it until the broccoli is to to your liking i like mine tender so i cooked mine completely done now i didn't show you how much liquid had formed in the pan I just want to show you I turned it up on high pretty much and cooked that completely out I didn't want it to be all soppy <laughs> soupy <laughs> now it's just a matter of dividing it into four servings and to serve which I'm gonna go ahead and do it before I store it in the fridge we want to divide our green onions that are left the green tops divide that between the four bowls and then top each bowl with uh, what I used was a half a teaspoon of sesame seeds, and that seemed like to be a really good amount. Now, here's the yum yum sauce that you serve with it. We have a cup of mayonnaise, any mayonnaise you want. You could use sugar-free ketchup. That's two tablespoons. I just use regular. A tablespoon of melted butter. And then it is, oddly, one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of Muck fruit sweetener, so that's what I did. I didn't change this recipe at all. I left it as as it was written. Then this is, I think, a tablespoon of the unseasoned rice vinegar. Yeah, I don't have my recipe right in front of me, so I'm trying to guess and remember what I did. It is one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder. I remember that. Then a half a teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of paprika. And then all we want to do is whisk that together until there are no lumps left from the mayonnaise. Coming up next is going to be our German chocolate cookies. We're starting with the dry ingredients. Now don't, don't write this down. It's a quarter cup of almond flour because we're going to change that. Three tablespoons of cocoa powder, a teaspoon of instant coffee, a half a cup of monk fruit, and an eighth teaspoon of salt. And we just want to whisk that all together really well before we add our wet ingredients. And that includes one egg and, let's see, what do we add next? The whipping cream. One third cup of heavy whipping cream. And I think that might be where our trouble came in and three tablespoons of melted butter. 
Now you're going to see how loose this quote unquote dough is. I was skeptical because <laughs> it looks like a cake mix. But I went ahead and added the pecans and the coconut just to see how that did. So that is a quarter cup of finely chopped, I put them in the food processor, pecans. And then this is unsweetened coconut that I also put in the food processor because I just did not like how big those flakes were. But you do want to use unsweetened coconut if you're going to keep this low carb. So just whirl that around until it is um, finely chopped. Once we add that, the batter starts to look a little bit better, but still not where you want cookies to be. It's, it's more like a brownie batter at this point. What I did was I added some almond flour, approximately two tablespoons at a time. I think that little scoop I have is two tablespoons. I did that one time, two times, started around, still wasn't satisfied, so I added another two tablespoons. So I'm writing the recipe to start out with three quarters of a cup of almond flour. Add more as needed, however your dough looks. But I was finally satisfied with the way it looked there. Now line your baking sheet with parchment paper, and I'm using my small cookie scoop. Flatten them. You don't have to mash them out flat, but just kind of mash the tops down just a little bit to take that the round top off. I ended up with 15 on this baking sheet, and I had to put two more on my little baking sheet. And these go in the oven at 350 for 15 minutes. Here, I just wanted you to see after 15 minutes how moist the tops were. The recipe said bake them till they're dry, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted a moist cookie. So I'm going to let them cool completely before I move them off of the baking pan. So here's what we have accomplished today for breakfast. And you'll notice there's two missing because we had them for breakfast. Is the sausage and egg casserole. It's very delicious. For lunch, the sesame egg roll in a bowl and some keto yum yum sauce to serve that with and then the cookies i didn't put them all out because i'm letting them completely cool before i package them but i wanted to show you even though how moist they were on the top see how they set up into a cookie but you can see the bottom was starting to get done i didn't want to burn them so you gauge by your oven how long you need to cook them and so that is it for the week I hope y'all have a good week and I will see you on my next video.